dear students welcome to the module on nutritional needs during pregnancy eating for two does not means eating twice as much it means that the food taken by the pregnant mother are the main source of the nutrients for her baby the pregnant women should eat healthy foods is more important than ever they need more calories proteins iron calcium folic acid than before pregnancy more sensible balanced meal which will be the best for her and for her baby body goes through a numerous physical and hormonal changes during pregnancy the way the pregnant women nourishes her body during this time will affect the health of both her mother as well as herself so she must eat a healthy a balanced diet to help to ensure her to stay healthy throughout the pregnancy period the food she eat is also a main source of the nourishment for her baby so it is critical to consume the food that is rich in nutrients a proper nutrition can helps to promote the baby's growth and development most pregnant women can meet the increased nutritional needs by choosing a diet that includes a variety of healthy foods a simple way to ensure her getting all necessary nutrient is to eat different fruits foods from each food groups every day in fact all meals should include at least three different food groups as have to be combined each food groups has something to offer to her body keeping this in mind the following are the objectives of the module to understand the demands required to the body during gestation and to understand the nutritional needs and requirement during pregnancy let us discuss in detail about why the nutritional need is important during pregnancy extra need in the pregnancy are folate iron calcium are the most important to make the women to be satisfied during the gestational period thus then it should be focus on the planning a diet for a pregnant women before diet planning is been discussed however one important misconception about the pregnancy needs to be dispelled you have been heard about that mothers instantly know what to eat and they are been carving for the pickle ice cream and has been dictated by the natural desires to consume the needed nutrients thus carving food craving are the most common during the last two trimester and could be related to the hormonal changes in mother or just a family tradition it remains an even a greater mystery why some women crave for a non food substances during pregnancy the craving for or eating an item such as starch ice chalk burnt matchstick soap plaster clay are be noted during pregnancy and it is named as a pica to meet the increased nutrient requirement of the mother should consume an extra food the mother can be given extra nutritious snacks in between the meal rather than the three meals a day thus increased in the frequency of feeding her feeding pattern should be 5 to 6 meals a day the proteins needs can be met by including a good quality protein foods like meat milk egg fish the protein can also be obtained from the pulse sources like soya bean and groundnut which is a lower in cost to improve the protein quality the combination of plant protein as it is the cereals and pulses with the small amount of animal protein should be used an additional protein intake of 15 g per day uh, it has been recommended as 65 g during the pregnancy additional protein is been required for certain essential function for the growth of the fetus the development of the placenta enlargement of the uterus mammary gland increase in the maternal blood volumes and the formation of amniotic fluid and also for the preparation of the labor delivery postpartum after pregnancy period and lactation by the maternal tissues to meet the additional iron it needs footsteps like whole grain cereals rice flakes puff rice dried fruits green leafy vegetables eggs 
and enriched cereals and organ meats should be given. The requirement of iron increases from 30 mg per day to 38 mg per day during pregnancy. The increased requirement to additional 8 mg has been added. Because of the reason, expansion of the maternal tissues including the red cell mass, iron content of placenta blood loss during pregnancy. To build the iron store in the fetal liver to last for the at least for 4 to 6 months after pregnancy. This is because the baby's first food is the milk which has been deficient in iron. Whatever is being stored in the liver will be generally used after delivery. Generally, the infants are born with a high level of iron above 18 to 22 gram per 100 ml. The food rich in dietary fiber is like a fresh fruits, vegetable, whole grain cereals with a plenty of fluids need to be included in a pregnant mother's diet. This will be a void of constipation which is a common problem during pregnancy. Do you know why the importance of good nutrition is needed for a pregnant woman? Yes, to avoid or to overcome some of the common nutritional deficiency diseases like anemia, hypertension and gestational diabetes. The first common deficiency diseases in India is anemia. Government have taken an initiative programs to overcome this deficiency among the adolescent girls, adult women and pregnant women and lactating mother. The pregnant women is being labeled anemic if the blood hemoglobin is less than 10 gram per ml from 28th week onwards. A significant fall in the birth weight due to increases in the prematurity rate and intrauterine growth retention can occur if the hemoglobin level goes below 8 gram per ml. The demand for the foliate is increased due to the uh, increased cellular proliferation. The low foliate levels are due to the deficient intake. The megaloplastic anemia occurs due to the foliate deficiency results in the uh, frequency due to the reasons of nausea, vomiting and anorexia. The next type of anemia is common among the pregnant mother is the physiological anemia. Here the normal increases blood volume in the pregnant women that dilutes the concentration of the RBC resulting in anemia that is named as a hemodilation. Hemodilution. The another common nutritional related problem a pregnancy induced hypertension. Pregnancy induced hypertension is a syndrome characterized by the hypertension, proteinuria, edema, convulsion and coma. This condition results in the third trimester. Preeclampsia or eclampsia are the two stages which differs with the degree of symptoms. Eclampsia denoting a severe stage. Pregnancy induced hypertension is defined by the systolic pressure of 140 mm in mercury and diastolic pressure of 90 or both. Easiest way to diagnose the pregnancy induced hypertension arise in the systolic pressure by 20 to 30, diastolic pressure will be 10 to 15. The extent of proteinuria varies with the degree of pregnancy induced hypertension. The edema of the preeclampsia may be associated with giddiness, headache, visual disturbances and then facial edema, anorexia, nausea and vomiting. In the severe state of eclampsia, convulsions occurs near the time of delivery. The optimal nutrition is a fundamental aspect for this treatment. The most common disorder seen during pregnancy is the GDM that is nothing but the gestational diabetes mellitus. Due to the increased blood volume and corresponding the metabolite load, some glucose has been excreted in the urine. Most of these women revert the normal glucose tolerance after delivery. But they have a high chance of developing NIDDM after 40 years of age. The incidence of preeclampsia is high in the pregnant women with diabetes mellitus. And do you know what happens to the baby if a pregnant mother does not eat properly? The several outcomes are possible ranging from the fetus dying to having a child of low birth weight but with no other adverse symptoms. 
Each case is slightly different. The most fatal one is the fetus or infant death. If a mother is truly malnourished, it can lead to the death of the fetus or the baby who is more likely to die in infancy than a child whose mother has properly nourished. These cases are thankful, very rare in the areas of prenatal care around global. The pregnant women with a severe anorexia or bulimia might have this experience if they conceive but for the women who eat three or more times a day this is truly a rare result of improper nutrition generally malnutrition in the mother is far more likely to cause a physical or neurological defects in the newborn children than it causes the death the next one is on insufficient growth the women who do not consume enough foods rich in vitamins and other nutrients may have the babies who grow slowly due to the lack of resources available in the pregnant women's body. While a baby being small may not seem like such problems on the surface, insufficient growth is often a sign of other more serious and problems underlying it. Another one is the neurological diseases. Improper nutrition can result in many neurological diseases in some cases, the spine or the brain may fail to develop normally. In less severe cases, all may seem normal but the child may suffer from the learning disabilities. Neurological disorders are potentially preventable with a sufficient intake of folate and B12. Normal adult women requires 100 mg of folic acid per day. The ICMR recommendation during pregnancy is about 400 mg per day. The folic acid is essential for the increased blood formation and the synthesis of essential components of RNA and DNA which increases rapidly during the growth. The last one is on the low birth weight. Many infants born in the lowest end of the birth weight spectrum have mothers with more or less nutrient deficiency diet. Of course, being a low birth weight does not necessarily signify underlying problems. However, in many cases, low birth weight is a symptom of a overall improper nutrition. Babies with a low birth weight are much more likely to suffer from a chronic condition and are also more likely to die during infancy. Let us move on to the interesting and important topic on a proper nutrition during pregnancy. The most important thing to remember while trying to conceive and throughout the pregnant is to eat diet with varied and nutrient rich. Potato chips pack which adds calories but add virtually no vitamins and minerals. That is a flip end of the spectrum on fruits and vegetables with a pack loads of nutrients with few calories. Pregnancy does not require a load of extra calories but it is an extremely important time to look after whether or not a pregnant woman should eat enough vitamins and other nutrients. Calcium and protein should be kept as a significant level and fat should be expect low. Fewer than 60 to 65 grams per day in the case of 2000 calorie diet. Similarly, a gender healthy adult diet will be varied with the meals and aims to provide high nutrient density. Suppose if a long term poor nutrition occurs, we are going to see what will happen. Nutrition has a critical role in our overall health status. Both undernutrition and overnutrition may seriously impact on health status and life expectancy. A well published studies over the last 50 years have clearly demonstrated a link between the obesity and many of the most serious chronic human diseases including the diabetes mellitus, cardiovascular disease and cancer. What is well known is the fact of the prenatal nutrition can lasting effects on the child from the affected pregnancy. Most of the research of the data has focused on the micronutrients such as the vitamins and minerals which have been widely recognized to play a critical role in the fetal health problem. A less well-defined but equally important area of 
a study is influences of the macronutrient status in the mother. Carbohydrates, lipids, proteins are necessary for energy requirements and need to be maintained in a proper balance of optimal health and growth. During pregnancy, a maternal energy requirements are subsequently increased. The consequences of unhealthy or inadequate diet in the mother will result in poor nutrition. While the data that the inadequate macronutrient status during pregnancy might improper impair the fetal development seems almost self-evident given the metabolic demands during pregnancy. There is a growing body of evidence to indicate that excessive macronutrient intake can also have a serious long-term health consciousness. Recently, the North American diet tend to provide excessive fat and carbohydrate resulting in the macronutrients less. The incidence of diseases associated with overeating is on the rise. The direct effect can be seen in the current generation. The negative consequences on the offspring of these individuals are only now becoming an apparent. In other regions of the world, the opposite situation exists in which the peoples are unable to obtain an adequate nutrition particularly the protein. Surprisingly, the effect of inadequate nutrition frequently mirror the effect of overeating, suggesting the potential common underlying mechanism of the responses to the abnormal dietary condition. The long-term effects of poor prenatal nutrition becoming a matter of increasing concern throughout the world. While the consequences of inadequate calorie or the vitamin intake during pregnancy have been well characterized. In recent years, it has become clear that the serious long term adverse effects may also result from gestational nutrient imbalance even when the total calorie intake is more than the sufficient to meet the demands of pregnancy. Excess fat, carbohydrates, Proteins intakes may permanently alter the homostatic mechanism in the fetus. Predisposing of the offsprings are affected pregnancy to the serious chronic diseases including the cardiovascular disease, diabetes and cancer. Next we are going to discuss about a malnutrition during pregnancy. A malnutrition increases the risk of the poor pregnancy outcomes including the obstructed labor, premature or low birth weight babies and after pregnancy the hemorrhage. The severe anemia during pregnancy is linked with the increased mortality during the labor time. Now we are going to see what is malnutrition in anemia. Malnutrition is a serious condition that occurs when an individual diet contains insufficient nutrients that do not meet the requirement of the pregnant mother. It can cause the damage to the vital organ and can adversely affect the functioning of the body. Now we are going to see what are the causes of malnutrition during pregnancy. Here you can see some of the following factors are the causes for the malnutrition during pregnancy. First one is on the lack of nutritious diet because of low income families, a painful teeth or mouth condition that may affect the ability to consume, the following an unhealthy diet due to the lack of knowledge, loss of appetite to the poor health conditions such as a chronic infection, depressions, etc. Use of uncertain medication that may interfere with the nutrition absorption. Diarrhea, nausea, vomiting may also cause a malnutrition. Inadequate intake of nutrients and calories that does not meet the increased demands of pregnancy. Now we are going to move on to the next important aspect is on the health risk for the mother. Women who are undernourished at the time of consumption or pregnancy may also fail to meet the increased nutritional requirements during pregnancy. It can lead to the insufficient weight gain during pregnancy and increased mortality risk. Now in the slide you can go through the deficiency of micronutrient during pregnancy that can lead to the following condition. 
zinc and the magnesium deficiency could cause because of preeclampsia and preterm lack of iron and b12 could cause anemia inadequate intake of b12 can lead to neurological disease issues vitamin k deficiency can lead to the excessive bleeding during childbirth and inadequate of iodine intake during pregnancy can lead to the miscarriage or stillbirth now we are going to see what are the effects of malnutrition during pregnancy can have an adverse effect it can affect the mother's health in the following ways it can lower the immunity and leads to infection it causes anemia and weakness it can lower the productivity so far you have been hearing about the health risk for the mother here you are going to learn the health risk for the babies according to the study in the uterus malnutrition could adversely affect the growth of the baby in the early age it can also increases his risk of suffering from obesity diabetes mellitus and other metabolic complications like the liver diseases etc in this slide you can learn on the micronutrient deficiency during pregnancy could aff adversely affect the baby in the following ways iodine deficiency can cause a congenital abnormalities neurological cretinism mental deficiency etc it can also increases the infant mortality rate lower the zinc levels can cause the fetal growth retardation and conjunctional abnormalities the vitamin d deficiency can lead to the rickets in the fetus deficiency of folate can cause the neurological defects in the infants calcium deficiency can lead a poor fetal skeletal development low iron levels in the mother's body can cause the fetal growth retardation suppose if a pregnant women take a unbalanced diet during pregnancy that could uh, toll on to the newborn's health in the following ways it can lead to a stillbirth it can cause a premature birth it can increase the prenatal mortality risk it can also lead to the neurological respiratory intestinal and circulatory complications in infant it may lead to the birth defects and brain damage next one is on the maternal undernutrition can make the child prone to following health complications in long run renal dysfunction the child may face a cardiovascular issues like hypertension atherosclerosis stroke or chronic diseases in his later life osteoporosis breast cancer organ dysfunction of the testes ovaries or brain heart liver and small intestine maternal nutrition can also have a negative effect on the me mental development and school performance of the child in her later age low birth weight it is significant contributor to the infant mortality moreover the low birth weight babies who survive are likely to suffer a growth retardation and illness throughout their childhood adolescence and into the adulthood the growth retarded adult women are likely to carry on to the vicious cycle of malnutrition by giving birth to the low birth weight babies here are some of the different ways we are able to prevent this condition having a balanced diet can help the pregnant mother to enjoy the safe pregnancy consume a lot of fruits and vegetables to gain vitamins minerals and fiber include a healthy protein sources like fish eggs pulses uh, and poultry in the diet and also add a starchy foods like a corn meal bread potatoes to meet the increased carbohydrate requirements the last concept in this module is on the micronutrient deficiency the micronutrient deficiency arises when the mother consume a sufficient quantity of the food that provides enough calories to meet the energy needs of the body but the food that has been consumed does not contain a specific micronutrient that are needed to maintain the mother's health as well as the fetal development iron deficiency calcium deficiency are the examples of micronutrient deficiency 
that arises during pregnancy. Deficiency of micronutrients during pregnancy definitely arise the problems during pregnancy like vitamin K leads to blood clotting disorder, iron deficiency can make the mother anemic, magnesium deficiency can increase the chance of preterm delivery, iron deficiency are associated with miscarriage and stillbirth, zinc deficiency preterm rupture of amniotic sac and premature delivery. To summarize this module, the women's nutrition intake before and during pregnancy affects not only the growth and development of a baby but can also even have an effect on the malformation or mental retardation. If a specified deficiency of minerals and vitamins like iodine and folic acid, increased folic acid intake pre-consumptionally and during pregnancy has also shown to help to reduce the neural tube defects. To conclude that the pregnant women should gain weight based on the pre-gravid body mass index, receiving the counseling on the healthy diet and to be monitored regularly by identify a potential problems with early intervention when indicated. A varied diet that includes the right amount of the healthy food from the basic 5 food groups generally provides our bodies with enough of each vitamins and minerals for each day. However, a pregnant woman may need a supplements of particular vitamins and minerals. She should have to consult the doctor before she takes any type of supplements.